Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew for Aurora Gameworks and welcome to the second part of this Unreal Engine 4 tutorial on creating a day-night cycle. If you have not seen the first part yet, I'll leave a link in the description and I'll pin it in the comments. Uh, in the first part, what we did was that we created what you can see on screen right now. Um, I have it sped up just for testing purposes so we know that it's working and it's just a simple um, moving actor event using the tick function. See? Now, what we're going to do in this part is just refine it just a little bit. Um, first thing that I thought that we should look on because it's kind of blatantly obvious, um, the sun, it doesn't really look like a sun, it just looks like a yellow disc in the sky with a slight glow. Now, first little bit that I just want to do here is actually make it look more like a sun. Um, what, what I'm going to do is under sky sphere blueprint I'm going to come down to sun brightness and let's just scale that up a little bit. You can scale this number to any value that you want. It's personal preference. Um, I kind of like it at around about 1000 has a has a more natural glow to it now with that done next thing i'm going to do is to click on uh post process volume now in here if you scroll down to the lens category there'll be a lens flare section if you turn on intensity we now have a lens flare i think by default though it's a little bit too um vivid it should be a little bit more subtle than that. So I'm just going to scale this down to 0.1. Now you can fiddle around with the other settings like bokeh size, which does this. I think six looks pretty good. You just want to move the camera around a little bit to see how that looks. I still think it's a little bit too vivid, so let's change that to 0.05. Boca size. Yeah, I think the bokeh size is alright at 6. Cool. Even just with that, now we have a more realistic looking sun in the sky that actually casts um, proper glow and lens flare. The next thing that I'm going to do is introduce some light shafts. Now to introduce light shafts to the sun we're gonna have to find our, our light actor, our light source, and come down to light shafts and click on light shaft occlusion. You want to enable this. Um, just to get it the way that we want it to look, find the sun and come up to an angle where we have about half the sun cut off from maybe a wall or something like that. In this case, I've set the occlusion mask darkness all the way down to zero. Uh, one is for no darkening at all, and zero is for the most darkening. As you can see here, as we pan left to right here, we get a little bit of darkening in the space where light is being stopped by our player character. And you can scale this occlusion mask darkness number to be any value that you want, it's just personal preference. So now that we've done a little bit of touching up on our sun, just to make it look a little bit better, uh, the next step that we're going to do now is actually getting the stars in the night sky to rotate as if the planet were spinning. Because right now, when it's at night time, those stars do not move at all. As you'll see next time the sun comes down, and we have stars here. Yep, they're just not moving at all. And what we're going to do now is get them moving. To get the stars in our night sky moving, First, let's click on Skysphere Blueprint, Edit Skysphere Blueprint. Now under Construction Script, 
The first thing that you'll see here is a create dynamic material instance. Here's the source material. This is the material that we want to access. If we just click on browse, it should take us here into the engine sky folder under engine content. And we'll get M underscore sky underscore panning underscore clouds two. Let's double click on that. And now we have access to the sky material. Once you are in this blueprint, make your way over to the left and then down and we want to get to the sky colors category. Now I was just doing a little bit of debug here before just to make sure that this was working. Um, you're going to want to find this texture sample that has T underscore sky stars in it. This is the texture that we want to have moving. Under UVs there will be a texture coordinate node. Unhook that by holding the ALT key and clicking on the node to disconnect. Let's just move that over here. Dragging off of the text cord, we want to type in Panner, which is under the coordinate section. For time, just type in time, which is under the constant section. You know it's the right one if it has input data underneath it. And for speed, underneath we just want to hold down the one key, the number one key, and then connect these two. In this value here, I have calculated that a pretty accurate speed is dividing the sun speed variable within our level blueprint by 100 and then times two, we get a speed that's pretty consistent and looks as if they're moving at the same speed. So in this case, if we come to our sun speed, it says 25. So if we get 25 divided by 100, that's 0 0.25. And then we want to times that by two, which is 0.5. Now with all of that, we want to connect this panner node to the UVs. Hit apply and save. Before we take a look at how this looks in the sky in motion, first I'm just going to actually slow down the sun speed. Uh, I just tried filming what it looked like before and with the, the speed that it was going at, the, uh, the uh, motion blur was actually making it quite hard to see the stars moving in the night sky. So we're going to take our sun speed of 25 and decrease it to 5. Just for now, uh, we know that it's all working and everything, so let's bring it down to a speed where we can actually look at the detail. Now remember that we want to go back to our material. back under the sky color section and we want to change this number to be 5 divided by 100 which is 0 0.05 and then times that by 2 which is 0 0.1 apply and save a quick way to save everything in your project that needs to be saved is to click on this save all button. Yep, save selected, all goods. And now we can see in action the stars in the night sky moving at a correct speed. Once the uh, sunset goes away, there you have it, we now have moving stars in the night sky. Uh, that'll do it for the second part of the day-night cycle tutorial. Uh, I've been Andrew, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like these tutorials and are looking for more, make sure to subscribe to the Aurora Gameworks channel. Um, we are also doing some work on our own games, uh, so make sure to subscribe and stick around to look at our own projects. Uh, and with that being said, Again, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.
You got that style everybody likes We'll light it up, take a look at the sky 